welcome back to the Wilsons on Wilson. Last week when we saw you, we were finishing up the greenhouse and this week we are still finishing up the greenhouse. Okay, so it's pretty rainy, glum day, but we're getting lots done. The boys have officially put the trusses up there, which is really exciting. So hopefully by the end of today, we'll have a roof on there and we'll have some walls. So fingers crossed. So it's definitely a uh, labor of love work in progress, but it's coming along good. <laughs> so we're just going to get started on a few things this week. Um, we've got lots of jobs to do, so uh, let's head out there. While Cody was at work, I basically gutted that whole corner, organized more wood into the woodshed. And it's not done by any means, because every time the weather's nice, I'm outside. And then any time it starts to rain, I'm like, I'm going back to the barn. So then this is what we've been working on in here. So I got this whole area cleaned out, got all of these shelves put up for organization, and then we got this desk. It was free, free 99, and it was from a gal on Marketplace, and it's called a partner's desk. So it's a big desk, like it's got a big top to it. It's got drawers on both sides and pullouts on both sides as well. So this whole area, we're gonna organize all of our tubers down here so we can get them popping. And then we're gonna put the partner's desk right here so it'll be like a big, huge work zone and it'll all be so organized and so beautiful. So that's really exciting. We got so much done, like look at this. It's so cool. We got our shelves in here. And it's actually so toasty in here. It's so fun. Oh, it's wonderful. I put my I put my passion flower in here so that it could wake up to see the day and there's actually a million spiders living in it which I mean I'm a little like maybe I should put the spiders outside but then also part of me thinks if there's gonna be bugs in my greenhouse which there are perhaps I want this colony of spiders living in here being my friends I haven't made a decision yet but there's many maybe I'll put half outside and then I'll just leave a couple in here for us. I don't know. <laughs> this actually is gonna be, so the whole greenhouse will get shifted uh, slightly west. So we'll probably get to put it back about a foot so that it meets up with the um, seating shed as we're calling it. So like this is the greenhouse, that's the seating shed. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna move this whole structure back and then we're gonna build a ramp that comes up to here. So basically, It'll come up to this lip, and then it'll come up to this lip as well, because everybody keeps tripping on this thing. It's, it's, it's not a safety standard. It's not. <laughs> so, this is probably the most exciting. Oh yeah, see, look at this. The wind just keeps blowing it out of place, and they all shift and migrate. Like, it said, it said three people, three hours, and it took four people two days, plus Cody and I for the last week and a half of fixes. I mean, false advertising. <laughs> but anyways, this is uber exciting. So we got everything framed in, we got our windows put in, we got our roof up. There's a chance you need new work boots. Why? I mean, they may have seen better days, babe. We got this too. Look at this. Tool storage. You guys, this is freaking magnificent. I mean, I get to hang all my tools under here and they'll stay dry. Ooh, it's so exciting. It's so, so exciting. So we're gonna put screens up in this corner area here. So these corners are gonna get screened and then we're gonna put basically like a 
a door on them that can be removed so that in the hottest point of summer when we need lots of airflow through here because with a glass ceiling it's gonna get hot 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 in here and so we want to be able to open both sides and it'll just let tons of air flow right across the ceiling which means that hopefully that air won't even have a chance to get trapped in here at least that's my goal it's gonna be real hot in here but yeah this is work zone it's gonna be seeding thing and tagging thing growing thing could be exciting I think what we're gonna do next is we're going to look at the blueberries. So um, we had one blueberry bush that was here when we got here and this guy right here. And uh, it was mostly dead. So this one branch is still alive and it's sending up some living shoots from the base. So we know that the base of it is alive. I, f I fed it a bunch of comfrey all year last year and cut off half of the dead stuff. Hey. What are you doing? Are you eating it? Are you helping? Are you helping? But yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just cut, hey, <laughs> we'll just cut this stuff back, all of the dead stuff. You're very helpful. Thank you. And then hopefully that'll give a chance to for this to come back and live. And I think it'll be a good sort of like show and tell, you know, to see this is an old blueberry bush that has not been living its best life and how we'd prune that versus a big, well-established blueberry bush that isn't gonna get as hard of a prune and it's just kind of like a maintenance prune. Whereas this is like, hope we can save your life prune. So we'll go get pruners and we'll do that. Come on, please. And look at how good those half caps are doing that we planted. Like they were, we were, they, they took a beating. Wait. They got ripped out with chains and a truck with no, no level of, no level of kindness. Okay, so basically we can tell here what's, hello. We can tell here what's dead, like this, this is old growth that's probably, uh, I would say, I mean, I don't know how many years old, but it's for sure at least a few years old. Ah, Annabelle, you're such a punk. Got you to step in. So you can tell here that this stuff has died back. This is the new growth that arrived last year. So we're for sure gonna leave these. I'm gonna leave this main branch here because it has some life at the top, but all of this dead stuff around, We're gonna get rid of, sorry Annabelle, here, you want your stick? You want your stick? Get the stick. Good job. And then we're gonna take all of this stuff back. This stuff is so dead that literally, like, you know, that you could just, and that's just completely toast. So it's as simple as just looking at it and establishing what's, what's dead and what's not. This one right here. Wait. I just broke off one of the good ones. <laughs> I ate, I ate life when I, when everything's on display. Hold on. Yeah. See, so like these guys here, you can look inside and see that that wood is completely dead. You can look at this branch and you just know like it's completely toast. So basically, and when you look at the tips here too, you can see like there's no life left in these tips. So we're not even gonna leave that one main that had a couple biddies on top because I mean, we could make it sound like it was on purpose. Like, oh, it looks so dead that, that we decided to take it off. But that's not the truth. The truth is I got distracted because there was a camera in my face and I took off the wrong branch. It's fine, everything's fine.
Toot toot. Toot toot, madam. Thank you. So we've left one, two, three, four main shoots. I'm gonna cut back these little guys here that aren't really gonna do as much. Like this one here has some breakage. You see how that tip is died back? So I'm gonna cut that one down. This one is really teeny tiny here too, so I'm gonna cut that one down. And then that leaves us with basically four main shoots that could produce for the future. Okay, so then when we come over here and we look at these guys, these are the ones that we planted last year. So we actually got them, I love Marketplace. I'm gonna be honest, I love Marketplace. So this guy was basically closing out his uh, organic or closing a section of his organic blueberry farm. And these are quite well established and he was selling them for 25 bucks a bush, uh, including delivery. So I mean, score, score for us. So what I like to do is make sure that if things are crisscrossing, I cut them out. You see this guy here is crossing against this guy, right? So even though this is new growth and we want to, each year you wanna cut back the oldest year's growth to, pr to um, produce more new shoots, when two sticks rub against each other, it causes damage, which you can actually see here. That's, it is a perfect example. So you can see on this stick where it's been rubbing against this one. So that is gonna cause damage and that's gonna be a spot where basically stuff can get into it. Um, so this crisscrossy one, I'm actually gonna cut off down here because there's damage to this, there's damage here and damage here. So I'm gonna cut off that crisscrossy one. I don't cut right into the branch. There's kind of a bit of a, there's a lip here. So if you can kind of see this ridge, I cut just above it and I always cut it in an angle. So this one here is doing some sort of weird wild thing like it wasn't getting enough sun and trying to go to the sunshine probably. And crisscrossing here as well as from here, it's coming up along and it's crisscrossing and rubbing on all of that stuff. This one crosses here and rubs against. So I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna take it at this angle just like that. So the other thing with this is ideally, I never like to take more than a third at a time. Sometimes you gotta, like when we pair, when we prune that pear tree, it is gonna be really aggressive and it, we're taking her right back to bear britches. Like it's, it's going down on that pear tree. But she is, she is deeply, deeply crusted and unloved. She needs, she needs TLC. But typically in these things, I'm definitely gonna shoot for taking approximately a third of it back. And then next year, I'll do another good cutback. Come tend the garden with me. We have so many seeds to sow. When the harvest comes in, it will be time to share what we have grown. enough for now. Uh, I have lots to continue on with this during the week to keep me busy, but for now I think we're going to head over to the Hascaps and take care of them, and then we're going to plant some of the tubers and rhizomes that we got from Marketplace. I've never grown a Hascap berry bush personally before. Uh, it's basically like a blueberry, but it grows like an elongated blueberry and it has way higher antioxidant values. Everything that I've read about it, I treat it the same as a blueberry, but its bark is so shredded down here. And so I'm just, I just want to look online and see if this is like a, like if this is a normal Hascap. Is this a characteristic of ha Hascaps? That's fine. Do Hascaps have shredded bark? Perfect. This is exactly what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> I just wanted to check. It's like, it says that the main trunk at its thickest will, uh, the bark will split and look almost like old riverbank grapevine. So shredded bark, which is exactly what it's doing. 
Perfect. Check. You're looking fly, my dear. It's like you can tell if you've got moss going growing on branches you do not have enough sunlight getting into your tree or your shrub like it's not like moss is killing it necessarily but you for sure need more airflow than that I feel like this is all I want to do for now I've taken out a fair deal of its center so you can see here basically a lot of times a lot of plants I like to trim like a fishbowl is the general vibe so I take out stuff when it's really dense like this I'll open up the center so that light can come in and get all in here and then I'll clean up the stuff around the bottom and try and give it sometimes I try and give it a nice shape like round it out or sometimes I just try and get in and then clean up. So this one here, the, all the bulk of the inside is gone. There's a little bit of crisscrossy stuff still happening, but it's so wild that I can't, I can't take it all away. So, but uh, a lot of the really mossier stuff that was in here I took out, this whole stuff here you can see is cleared. So that's gonna give it a ton of airflow and let all that light in. Okay, so I think we're going to move on to some planting which I'm super excited about. We'll head over kind of down by the creek. We've got some stuff that wants a little like shady, moist corner to hide in. So uh, we'll get to it. which I love. They are such a special touch of color and in the shady areas too, it's just so beautiful to have those little pops, the way the foliage goes and they kind of crawl across as well, which gives a good level of root. So when you're thinking of the ecology of a, like when you're thinking about a root system, you want within any zone to have multiple layers, deep tap roots. Some guys go this way, some guys go this way. So this is a really good ground cover. Whereas these nut trees are actually going to have deep roots that are going in and they're soaking up all this beautiful water and soaking up things from below. Then there's perennials all throughout here as well whose roots are going to go deeper. And then these wood anemones are going to be the top layer and everybody's gonna be blooming at different times and giving interest at different times of year and giving good stuff to the bees at different times of the year, which is wonderful. <laughs> so these are a really fun addition to the garden and I'm so stoked that I met the girl from Marketplace who uh, hooked me up. <laughs> something you want to water it but this ground is so saturated because we've had a lot of days of rain and we're supposed to have like another full week of rain coming up after it so I'm actually not gonna bother watering these guys they don't want to be in a swamp you know so I think I'm just gonna let them soak up what's around them for now and then they can handle the rain as it comes so we're just gonna cover everybody back up nice layer of mulch and uh, just let them do their thing. 
I've mentioned before how basically to me when I'm planting the garden it's like I'm painting a picture and I'm trying to see the things like I'm trying to see into the future of how tall things are going to be what their foliage is going to look like what the textures are going to be what the colors are going to be so when I stand back here and I look and I can see I have a lot of stuff here that's going to be in the hip height range. I've got flocks all through here and some tubers. I've got vervain here, rose, I've got valerian, and I've got bee balm. These are all pretty tall. I've got some wormwood here. So this, as it's sitting right now, is very tall to sort of medium tall and there's enough space to kind of walk through. I want to leave my, my, my space for footing so that I can get in there and work. So this is like a big tall ish guy, medium ish guy. I've got rhubarb popping up here. So that'll be kind of a big ish medium. This guy popping up here, which is a little bit taller. So I think color wise we'll have the pink, the purplish, the pink, and these guys are tall and white. And the way that their foliage comes up, it's so beautiful. And then the way that they their flowers shoot out and come down, oh, it's just like white blooms. It's gonna be so beautiful. So I'm thinking big, tall, pink, big, tall, pink, purple. I'm thinking here and here are gonna be two really good spots for the Solomon seal to sit. So that you can kind of see, it's like if you look, it's one, two, three, and then we're in between. So there's a nice stagger. So basically the first step to planting any garden is weeding, you know? And like, by the way, is anyone out there in friggin' internet land has a good organic tip for getting rid of buttercup? Please tell me because this farm is basically brambles and buttercup. Like that's what it's, it's made on. So if any of you know a better way other than just dig it out and try and get as much roots as you can, which is my general tactic on it, please hit me up and let me know. I'm, I'm down. So you can actually see some of last year's carrots that are in here which are gonna be breaking down and feeding the soil. So it actually breaks up hard compact when, they're, when their roots go down into it deep, and then it breaks it up, and then as this breaks down in here, it's gonna feed the soil more, which is really cool. And now that we have all these little shoots coming up, like you can see the bare bridges here, you can see the flocks popping, you can see where we've planted our tubers, and that stuff is all popping up, so that's really cool which means that we have a good idea of where things are gonna land. So this big tall, this big tall, we know where that is, we know where our tubers are. So, bump, we're gonna step in between and just forward, and this is where our Solomon Seal's gonna go. So then these are our Solomon Seal. And what we wanna do with these guys, they like to grow with their main piece here, they want to grow this way. It's not something you plant up and down. It's something that it, the structure grows horizontally. So you want to know where your shoot is coming from. And then you want to just put that shoot facing up. So you can see these guys, they have all of these smaller roots, but this rhizome piece here is what's going to be level. Okay, so I mean, I'm happy with what I got planted so far. I think it's gonna look really good. Uh, our next step is to hop up into the pear tree because my new battery for my chainsaw arrived. And uh, while we have some nice weather, uh, I definitely wanna get into her and get some of that dead stuff off. Let's go. So, okay. So our basic plan of attack here is to really, really clear out the inside of this. Like when you look at all this stuff, it's toast. It's all 
just, I mean, it's beautiful in there. There's moss growing on it and ferns and all sorts of stuff, you know, but there's no light getting in. There's no airflow coming through in the summertime. It's so densely packed that there's just, I mean, she can't breathe. That's it. How do we expect her to bear fruit if she can't even catch her breath? You know? Okay. So on today's episode of what the heck is going on here, we thought we were pruning the pear tree, uh, but Cody took the, the taller ladder that we need and all I have is two stubbies, so I can't get up in there. Okay, so I think we're gonna call it. Uh, I do not have the correct ladder to be able to prune the pear tree today. So I think I'm just gonna keep puttering in the garden, planting some of my plants, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.